Hello? Are you there? Well, I'm without my monitor again, so uh, you won't see me doing this. You might see me doing this. And that's just uh, to check to see how much time I have left in the show. <coughs> uh, hello there. Hello there. Hey. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm just like a regular welcome wagon. I'm welcoming you to the show. Same chick, different dog presents. Lauren Michaels, watch this please. That's the name of the show. By gum. By gum. Where did that term come from? By gum. That's the name of the show, by gum. That's like an old school thing, isn't it? Well, that is the name of the show, by gum. And uh, today is, don't tell me, don't tell me, 20s, I believe, I believe I can fly, no, I believe that today is October 24th, I, that's, that's my, I believe today is Friday, October 24th, 1997. So welcome to it. Welcome to this Friday. Uh, thanks for all your uh, emails and uh, calls uh, <clears throat> regarding my friend Squisher who passed away last week. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate those uh, emails and calls and uh, and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, if you came down to the Gale and uh, helped me... Uh, helped me do a little tribute to him down there by just hanging out and watching the band well thank you for that too um and also thank you so much for the people who are just sending in the mad asthma information asthma and allergy doctors a lot of alternative medicines out there um that's very cool that is very cool and I will be looking into uh, each and every one of those methods damn it see what I can I can do about this uh, ridiculous condition really ridiculous condition speaking of ridiculous <coughs> speaking of ridiculous I say um, excuse my coughing uh, what about these kids up in the Bronx these four or five uh, eight and nine year old kids I'm eating my hair aren't I I'm sorry about that these four or five eight nine year old kids who forced a lewd sexual act on a little girl who was also eight or nine I think as a matter of fact I'm pretty sure she was also I think she was maybe nine that is absolutely disgusting it is foul I for the life of me when I was nine years old, eight or nine years old, the little kids I knew when I was eight or nine were not thinking about doing anything like that. Were you when you were eight or nine? Whenever I hear like a 14 year old guy shot somebody, you know, or 16 year old kid killed his mother in some sort of wacky satanic cult thing in his school. I'm telling you, this shit was not going down. And if it was going down, it wasn't going down to the extent it is today when I was that young eight or nine years old when I was eight years old that was let's see 1975 I was eight years old in 1975 I was you know I was busy listening to my kiss album and maybe watching Yankee games and you know, I'm in third grade. In third grade, for Christ's sakes, I just was, you know, using script. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We learned how to write script, I believe, full out in third grade. We meaning the people in my school, not necessarily you. Can you imagine just being able to, to write your name in script and then forcing some girl to give you a blowjob? It doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It just is like so ridiculous. I just can't, I can't, I can't imagine it. It's just fucked up. Everybody out there, don't you agree that that's just fucked up? How can you not agree that? <laughs> Excuse me. That might be something that happens throughout the show. I'll warn you now. If you can't take... Well, look at this. Are you going to be able to come over here? Come here, you. Come. Come here. Don't make me look like a fool. You come over here. Do you see this face? This is the love of my life. Come here. Give me a kiss. Come on. Oh, I love you so much. This is my Rottweiler, who turned 10 in July. He's a big man at 10 years old. And this October 26th, which is coming up, will, will be our 10-year anniversary together. I bought him at a mall in Jersey. Can you believe it? At a mall in Jersey. I want another kiss. Come here, you big man. Give me... Okay, Daddy. Give me this kiss. Give me this kiss. Oh, come here, you kiss the mommy before I force you to. Oh, thank you. All right, now, out of the room. Go. Back it up. Back it up. You're going to knock shit over. Back it up. Now, out of here. Out of here. Sweetie. Quickly. Anyway. That was like a, a little break. A little break in the ridiculous sodomy story. And, uh... <clears throat> really... Did you see Teddy? Did you get to see him? Was he too distorted? He really is a cute dog. A little vicious at times, I gotta say. If you see me on the street walking him, don't approach us, please. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's just, uh, he's ten and over overprotective. And, uh, it's really, it's really bad. He's, you know, as he's gotten older, he's, I guess he thinks I've become somewhat weak. And, uh, to the point where David has to walk him. I really can't walk him that much. Because he just really goes after anybody that comes within like a five foot radius of me or even more. You know what I mean? It's just like we've, we're walking him at odd hours because we just don't want to we don't want him to hurt anybody. But uh, he's my good man. I love that dog. I love him to death. Ten years we've been together. Can you imagine? Ten years. I bet you can't imagine. I'm sure there's people out there who have, you know, that's the longest I've really been with uh, a pet. And uh, it's amazing. He's just like, you know what I mean? Live with somebody for ten years and it's just like, live with somebody who can't speak your language for ten years. It's like a little weird uh, telepathy vibe going. <coughs> it was very cool. Anyway, that was a special guest star tonight. Ted the Head, the Rottweiler. We also call him Spaghetti Man. Anything that rhymes with Teddy, basically, he'll listen to. He'll answer to, I mean. Hold on a second. David? Yeah. You want me to shut the door? You can. I know this is ridiculous, but you have to hold on. Teddy, you gotta be out of here. Go ahead, out. Quickly. He just busted in. Sorry, that's just how it goes here. That's just how it goes. Part of the uh, continuous show vibe. Alrighty, so. Those kids in the Bronx are disgusting. I'm wondering what the fuck their parents are about. 
what are their parents all about up there up there in the Bronx how old are these kids parents so that was the first thing I thought of these kids parents you know what I mean what are they thinking right now well obviously right now they're embarrassed as fucking hell and they're mortified they're mortified and I bet each one of those little kids those little boys is like no no it wasn't me it was this guy I bet they're you know so I bet each one of their parents are in denial that it was their kid but you know what it was their kid it was all of their kids and uh just ew just ew that's so foul and little eight-year-old kids, what kind of, you know, they're not going to get any kind of jail time. But that little girl is going to be traumatized for, I uh, believe me, believe me, for a long, long time, if not forever. I've, I've known girls that have been sexually abused at like six or seven by, you know, relatives or, you know, strangers or friends of the family. And uh, they never get over it. Thank God that never happened to me. I, you know, I can't imagine something like that happening when you're a little kid. It's, I've met these girls, man. They're freaking devastated. Devastated. 20, 30 years later, they're still in therapy. And they can't, for some reason, when you do something like that to a, a girl or a woman or... It really is just a it's a it's a mind fuck more than the physical ridiculousness of it because basically that is not you know that is not the issue I mean it is the issue at the, that moment but it's just your mind gets blown away I've seen these girls man I've seen women friends that are like 35 40 now and they just, it's just, you know, it affects the way they look at men, it affects potential relationships, it affects, you know, everything. It's, I, you know, are they going to be thinking about this when they sentence these, sentence these eight and nine year old boys? I hope so. I hope so. That's disgusting. And they should sentence the parents too. Oh, maybe they shouldn't sentence parents. But they should really take a look at those parents. <coughs> something ain't right. Obviously. Obviously, something's not right there. Ugh. It just, it's just, it's just foul. It's just foul to me to even... Like I said, I was just learning script. What else was I learning? You don't even know your times tables yet. You know what I mean? I think when you're when you're eight and nine years old, well, maybe not. But I think when you're in third grade, basically, you don't know your times tables yet. I'm just going back from my school. You know, so I remember clearly in sixth grade, timesing it up, and maybe fifth grade too. But I think third and fourth grade, you know, you're just trying to learn how to add and subtract you know <coughs> and write script and get chicks to give you blowjobs force chicks to give you blowjobs ugh fucking disgusting that's all I can keep saying alright I'm not going to give out the phone number because I don't think the phone number is going to be hooked up this week. Surprise, surprise. Um, however, hopefully, by next week, I'll have a phone hook up with a new number, with a bigger, uh, I guess, with uh, the capability of taking more than one calls. Hopefully, that's what the deal will be. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me because I'm about to blow my nose. And, uh, I 
It's just all part of the ship. Please, please, please hold. <laughs> Alrighty. Alrighty. I've blown my nose. And now I'm feeling fine. So. You know, I just. I still keep thinking about my friend, the Squisher Man. I still keep thinking about my friend, the Squisher Man, and I guess I will for a long time. He, uh. He did, uh, Christy, you're right, it was a, a, some sort of drug-related incident. And, uh, I guess we're just trying to f figure out which one. So, that's, that's how, that's how fucked up it is. We're not exactly sure what it was, but, uh, we, f we did find out from his, I guess from the, on an autopsy, that he also, on top of, uh, uh, various drugs and substances he also had some sort of uh, heart disease that must have been uh, like uh, hereditary or something because we found out that his sister had also died at the same age just about uh, of this heart disease <coughs> um, the squisher was not a thin guy and he was a smoker and so I think if he would have known that he had this disease, you know, no doctor would allow him to be living the life he was leading. And, uh, so he obviously didn't know, had no idea. So everything adds up to a really bad problem and, uh, resulted in his death. But, uh, <coughs> The gale actually Friday night, last Friday night, it was it was weird for me because I went down there because I was paying my respects to the squisher. He was uh like I said, he was like the mayor of the Nightingale and he would be down there every Friday and taping the shows and bullshitting with everybody, especially the girls. And uh so I went down there thinking, Yeah, this is you know, this is what Squisher would want, everybody coming down, hanging out and in his memory and whatever. And it was just a fucked up, weird vibe down there for me. Because there was people there that had no idea who, you know, who he was. <coughs> or that he ever was there. Because, you know, you get... The music is so... When you, if you walk by the Nightingale on a Friday night at, like, 2 in the morning, the music is loud as hell. Like, you can't help but hear it. So, what happens is a lot of people are just hanging out in the West Village... Or the East Village, and they're just walking around at 2 o'clock in the morning. They're looking for what else they should do next. And you walk by the gale, the music is so loud, and it's um, really great, that people just stroll in. And it's those people that I wanted to punch in the head Friday. Because they come in, and they're all happy, and I'm sitting there, you know, just like, I'm just like stone-faced. I'm like this. Just like, bummed out, and whatever. And these people are like, dancing, they have no idea, it wasn't their fault. But I still wanted to just punch each and every one of them in the face. But I didn't because I know that would be illegal. And, uh, just a ridiculous act, basically. But, uh, anyhow. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention that, uh, a couple weeks ago I was giving mad props to Ron Kuby, who, uh, again, I'll say, is probably the only intelligent person on WABC. And, uh, that's why they only let him on for, like, three hours a week or something ridiculous. But, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, his law clerk called up the hotline, the now defunct hotline, and uh, her name is Miranda, and she was very cool. And it was just a what a coincidence that she is a viewer of the show. So Miranda called up and said, "Oh, you know." Ba -da 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 -da. I've been watching your show, but never really had a reason to call in, and 
Now I do. I'm Ron Kuby's law clerk. And I was like, hey, that's a pretty fresh job, I bet. I bet you learned a lot of, uh, a lot of shit working at the Ron Kuby office. And, uh, well, I'm glad she's watching. I'm glad she's watching. Is he watching? Probably not. Miranda, you've got to get him to watch. You get him to watch. You promise him I'll mention his name every five minutes. I'll flash his phone number across the screen. No, actually, I can't do that. I can't do that. But I'll tell you that he's in the yellow pages. He's in the yellow pages. But I think he's under the, uh, You know what? I think I called them, actually, <clears throat> like a year or so ago. Because I was I didn't know I was I didn't know that they only did defense. For some reason I was just like you know why? Because my friend because my friend Jay that got shot and murdered last year, he died as he didn't die as a result of the gunshot wound. Well in the I guess he did ultimately, but he died because of poor care at the hospital. At Lincoln Memorial Hospital in the Bronx, the worst hospital in the world. He died of pneumonia. He died of pneumonia. Can you imagine? Because they, if his bed, his adjustable bed, <clears throat> like, if you're in the hospital for a long time and you lay flat, you're going to get pneumonia. They have to prop you up, even like when you eat, everything, you have to be propped up all the time. Otherwise, if you lay like this, something happens funky in your lungs and you get pneumonia. And you know what? That's what happened to my friend Jay. And we told the doctors, we're like, you've got to prop him up. Three of us have said something to the doctors and nurses. You've got to prop this guy up. He's, you know, it's bad enough he's paralyzed. And you're not taking care of him, but prop him up, for God's sakes. And they were like, oh, we're understaffed here. Instead, you know, in the, in the five minutes it took them to explain how understaffed they were, they could have been propping him up. We couldn't figure out how to prop that bed up because... Uh, in Lincoln Memorial, they, uh, the beds are not electric. They're not electric beds. They're hand crank beds. So, it wasn't happening. For us, we couldn't do it. And you know what else is fucked up about Lincoln Memorial? There's no phones in the rooms. There's no phones in the rooms. Any of the rooms in the hospital, there's no phones. So we try to bring them a cell phone and uh, there's no reception in there either <coughs> so all in all that place really bites fucking bites and uh, and my friend died in there so that was the reason I was going to call Ron Kuby because I thought well if anybody can help us and maybe he's you know because I know he's for the people he can help us go after that hospital but uh, I called up, and the lady on the phone, you know, she was very sympathetic, and she forwarded me to somebody else. She said, well, listen, he only does defense cases, but here's another guy's number. And I was just, I said, oh, okay, thanks. And I hung up, and I was just like, I don't want the other guy. I only wanted Ron Kuby. And uh, the assistant district attorney that's working on Jay's case up there told us, well, if you go after the hospital, the guy who shot him he's got to get off, you know, with a couple of years because he really didn't murder him, he just shot him. So it's just like, well, you know, so the hospital, you know, I I don't really, and I, and I personally can't do a damn thing because I'm not family. He was like a brother to me, but uh, that doesn't mean a thing in the, in the law cases. You have to be family <coughs> to pursue any, <coughs> and I just want that hospital shut down. Because as soon as I've told people, oh, you know, blah, 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 what happened to my friend Jay in Lincoln Memorial, uh, people people immediately come out with another horror story, either about Lincoln Memorial or other city hospitals. And it's just like, I'm telling you, I'm going to do a documentary on it. I'm going to do a documentary on everybody who was ever fucked in a, uh, in a city hospital. And if you know anybody, please. You can get in contact with me, just not through the phone number. It's it's an email address. <clears throat> it's samechick at AOL.com. 
same chick at AOL dot com. I uh I've gotta admit to you, I'm in the middle of a little move. A little move. Moving out of this uh upper west side apartment, moving into a a, a nicer place. And uh <coughs> That's why the phone number's not going to be connected this week because we're hoping we're hoping to move <clears throat> this week. <coughs> <coughs> so, which is another reason why I'm going to get the voicemail now. It would be a good time to get the voicemail. But I will be logging into my computer wherever it's hooked up and uh, I can definitely get emails. Same chick at AOL.com. Oh, I have to give it a little shout out to Noseburger from Heaven. He hasn't uh he hasn't been calling. He hadn't called for like two or three weeks. But he called last Friday and I think he told me to, I think he told me not to listen to BAI. Why did he tell me that? I forget. I forget. But uh yeah, everybody wants me to stop listening to WABC and listen solely to BAI. And you know what? I used to listen solely to BAI, but there's and I'm going to I'm about to make, you know, an enemies of everybody. But there's this annoying woman on BAI. And she's annoying and that her voice is annoying, her her approach is annoying. And BAI is a publicly funded radio station. And when I listened, believe me, I did my part, and I would donate as much as I could. But the fun drives, and I don't even mind the fun drives. They're almost, I think they're monthly. They have monthly fun drives. And they're for two weeks. And this one woman, just in the morning, she just thinks she's the head of the fun drives. And maybe she is, but she, her her voice is like a, nails on a, on a chalkboard to me. I don't know her name, but she'll be like, and I'll be like, oh my god, I can't listen. I'll send in money just for her to shut up. So I gotta say that that's the real reason I don't listen to BAI is because of that woman. But I do listen to Gary Null when I can because he is amazing, like I said. All right. <coughs> we are winding down. The show is winding down. And, uh, Just quickly to the, gotta tell you, this lady calls me up, and she says, um, "I don't want you to give my number out on the air, but you're very unappealing to look at." And I think I'm since I'm a performer, I can say this to you. And she was dead serious, like dead serious. And I'm thinking to myself, "Lady, I don't care. I don't care that you think I'm unappealing to look at. The show is not about." being appealing to look at. The show is about me gaggling for 29 minutes and coughing and spewing out nose stuff. She didn't get it. But I appreciate how serious she was in her sentiment. It's really pretty funny, actually. She was really serious. Uh, I just want to say that you're very unappealing to look at. I'm not trying to be mean in any way, but I think that you should be wearing makeup, like the whole nine, the whole nine yards. You should get your hair styled. And I'm thinking to myself, what? I was just laughing. Me and Wacky Dave were laughing our asses off. All right. Oh, I gotta go, for sure. Ciao.